Yo guys, what is up YouTube? Welcome to Never Lost Adventures. I uh, have the uh, special day to hang out here with my son. Today we are gonna finally install our McNeil Racing fiberglass uh, bedsides. And my son is here to help me. So that's super awesome, lovely wife behind the camera. So we'll try to make this as uh, clean, cut and clean install video as possible. Um, I know the majority of the steps, what to do, uh, but there is going to be a little bit of learning curve. Plus, uh, us personally, we made some adjustments on the bedsides, which may alter some fitment that you guys may not have. And then we'll, so we'll take it step by step and go from there. So I'm not going to go through all the tools that we're going to need because I may need different tools than you may need. Uh, I have an 05 uh, Toyota Tacoma, and I think the bedsides are for 05 to 15, if I believe and um, I have the four inch bulge and I have the six foot bed. It's a good starting place. Um, I know that you're gonna need a drill for the fuel. Obviously you're gonna need the different hardware uh, or sockets for the different hardware. I know you need a 10 and a 12 mil. Um, then you're gonna need some um, uh, eight star uh, for, your, uh, for your bed bolts, T55s for the bed bolts and start tearing it apart. From what I know, from my experience, is um, take off all the easy stuff first and then start removing the bigger stuff and then start removing the bed. So I'll just kind of run through everything really quick and then we'll start the process. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my tailgate first to get it out of the way. One, it gives us a longer reach for inside the bed. Then we're going to remove the top rails, uh, plastic rails, super easy. Uh, then we're going to start removing the tail lights, get those out of the way. Then we need to remove the bumper because the bed needs to come up and off at least a little bit out of the way. You can wiggle it, which you'll see, um, to get the uh, front, if you will, the front of the bedside bolts that are, I think there's four or five of them, uh, to remove those. And then, then it just starts putting it, and then there's plastic underneath got to do all, all that all the supports underneath we got to do all that so here we go with the install take it step by step all right so like I said we're gonna start moving tailgate now we're gonna go ahead and remove the plastic uh, mine are a little easier to remove uh, because they've already been off a couple times just because of the fitment that we need to do and the adjustments that we need to do on the bedsides you could have a little pry bar um, or you can get the kind that are forked or you can just use a standard screwdriver. Again, mine are going to be a little easier. Um, if your truck is older, be, have caution because you may break some tabs. But if you're doing the fiberglass bedsides, you're not going to put these back on. But if you ever wanted to try to resell them, uh, then try to be as careful as possible. But the older the truck, the more damage you can do and you won't be able to use them again. But easy pull off. Now we'll go ahead and just remove the tail lights, get these out of the way. That way we can really start moving stuff around. We don't have to worry about damaging them. Okay, if you guys go off-roading like I do a lot, it might be a little dirty, but I always grease them so that way they, the connection on the inside is safe. Um, it doesn't get ruined and then they're easier to actually pull apart. It's literally just just the outside of the housing with all the dirt It makes it a little more difficult So now if you'd like I mean there's slightly different ways that you can do this You know you can do all of the tail light you can do underneath It's up to you however you want to work it I like to work from one section and then move to the next section um, the idea is to get all the important stuff out of the way um, so right now as you can see this metal bed frame all needs to be removed this is all one piece and all connected so the rest of the hardware in here needs to come out and then the rest of this hardware needs to come out along with this so I will have to remove my bumper before we can get to this that's totally fine it's heavy and I want to re remove it last so we'll do all the easy hardware first and then we'll go from there
Don't forget when you're removing your hardware to try to remember or take pictures. If you don't know, I highly suggest taking pictures of your hardware and where it belongs. Or if you have different color paint markers or permanent markers, usually paint markers are better, that you mark them certain colors and then mark them where they go. Simple pictures, totally fine. But most of this hardware is universal. So if you just keep an eye on what hardware goes where, you should be good to go. Or you can do something like this. This hardware goes in here, and then I know exactly where this uh, latch goes. So I just keep my hardware in there. That's what happens when you have a 2006 Toyota Tacoma and you never take out your hardware and you go off-roading a lot. It's harder to take out. So from here, after this hardware, minus the bottom below the, uh, what's this called, bumper? Below the bumper is the rails. So that would be the next easiest hardware to take out, which your rail system's right here. Um, that's uh, five simple uh, bolts, uh, Allen head bolts. And you got uh, five on this side, five on that side, and also five on the back. I already removed mine because again, fitment, and I wanted to repaint these and have these ready to go. So again, simple five bolts per railing, good to go. So when removing plastic, uh, I know that you can kind of keep this. I'm not going to keep anything. I'm not worried about any plastic tabs. And same thing when we go underneath all the plastic protection underneath the fender well. Again, I've cheated. I've already taken all that off because of fitment and other things that I'm doing. So you won't be able to see that in this video, but it's pretty simple. And if you are changing to McNeil fiberglass, you won't need that plastic anymore anyways. So most of the tabs break off and you don't have to worry about replacing them. As such, again, it's all going to be trashed. I don't need it anymore. Don't want it anymore. I'm redoing this whole thing. But again, if you wanted to try to sell it or do something like that, then you could. All right, so coming down underneath, again, I kind of cheated uh, because of fitment. I'm gonna stop saying that because you guys got it. But I've already removed all the plastic uh, housing or protecting, or protection if you will. So, and I already removed all this. As you can see, a lot of these tabs are broken off. There's no way around it. It's getting them off perfect and keeping them still good. They're just so old and sun-dried that they just crack. And so, if you're trying to keep your bed sides um, and sell them, then you will probably have to purchase these. You can get them on Amazon, I know. Uh, you can get them at your local uh, uh, automotive store. They should have them just for Toyota Tacoma. So that way, if you do want to sell your stock bedside, you can. So again, I've already removed all the plastic shrouds in here. So next, you have two braces. You have a front brace and you have a rear brace. I think they can be reused for the fiberglass but I think I want to rebuild them and make them a little bit better and make them out of aluminum, so I probably will. But for now, I'll just kind of keep them where they are. So right now, we're just going to undo the hardware that specifically connects to the bottom of the bed sides. I will not remove the brackets from the bed, if that makes sense. And then we'll, we'll get to the fuel line area when we get ready to, to remove them. So right now, we're just going to remove this hardware. Okay, so now we're to the point where we removed all that small hardware from underneath and all the top hardware. Now we're going to go ahead and remove this bumper because there are there's uh, two bolts that we can't get to. Uh, again, if you guys had a stock bumper, you'd probably have to remove that first before you could get any of the hardware that we pulled out. Um, it's been a long time since I've had my stock bumper, so I don't know. So right now, I still have stock hardware in there, which is 17 mil. We're going to go ahead and remove the bumper three bolts underneath. That's all I installed. I think that's all the stock had also. There are two more mounting points, but the stock bumper didn't have that. At least I don't believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. But either way, you have three bolts here and two bolts here. Okay, now let's do some business. Now remember, your last bolt, you always just want to leave it loose. Um, that way your bumper doesn't just fall out, especially an aftermarket bumper like this. It's pretty heavy.
Now remember, if this is the time where you guys have any wiring. Again, I already took apart my stuff, so I don't care about this. Um, but if you have any wiring uh, to any uh, trailer adapters or your lights, now would be the time to cut or remove whatever you're gonna do. Now the bumper's removed, we went ahead and finished uh, removing this hardware here. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the bed bolts. That way, we can get this bed up and out a little bit. So again, we can get that hardware that's in the front of the bed. All right, you guys, cool. Uh, so we removed uh, all the bed bolts and the rest of the hardware that we missed. So and the bumper is gone and removed so now bed's pretty loose so i will tell you there's uh the i guess the electrical box for the fuel cell and that gets in the way so you can't just literally take this and slide it it's only going to go so far so underneath here there's some uh i guess you would call it ridge supports if you will and those will hit things as you slide the bed you don't need to move it too far so you should be okay. Um, let's see here. But you do wanna get this up and over. The other thing before you move it, I forgot about this bolt. You wanna, you wanna move this because it's gonna to wanna to pull the whole bed. Obviously this is still attached to the bed and the neck, the fuel feed neck is still attached in there. So we need to remove this bolt so this feed neck also pivots and slides with the bed. So we'll remove that bolt and then Devin and I will pick up the bed and slide it out of the way to get the bolts back there. All right, so the bolt is removed underneath. And I'm gonna take, again, there's more ways to skin a cat. So things may vary uh, for you. So I'm gonna remove the gas cap. And then that way, this fuel nozzle will actually push down in there. So you, this is a rubber gasket. You can remove this rubber gasket first, but when I first removed these, I literally just popped that through and it seemed to be a little bit easier. The other option you can do is remove the hose clamps on the feed neck tube. And then that way it will help release all this tension right here. So there's a, there's a clamp here on the breather and then there's a um, hose clamp on the main line which I think in this sense, because I have to extend it, I'm gonna go ahead and undo those bolts and that, that uh, rubber clamp first. Then we'll pull the, fiber, uh, we'll pull the fender out, which will drop that uh, feed neck through there. Then we can pivot the bed and we can undo one side at a time, or you can pick it up more and be able to access both sides. It's up to you, whatever's easier. If you're working alone, it's easier to just take this up and pivot it. It's your call. So we didn't get it on video, but I went ahead and just undid the hardware here and undid the uh, soft hose to the solid tube. And uh, obviously you have to make, take your gas cap off, otherwise it won't pull through. And it'll just pull right through that rubber gasket just fine. Right now I'm trying to take off. It's, I know it's some type of fuel sensor on there. I'm trying to take it off, it won't come off. So for install and video sake, I wouldn't really worry about it as long as this is out of the way and you can tuck it out of the way and make sure you don't pinch any lines when you move the bed. Just pay attention to that. Um, for safety purposes, if you want, you could stick um, something, something in the fuel line just to cover it up so nothing goes down there. Just a safety precaution. So now we can pick up the bed and move it. As I said before, if you're working alone, you may just want to simply pivot like so because I can easily reach this hardware back here. But I got my wonderful son to help me, so we're just gonna pick it up and move them both at the same time. So this is the hardware that I was talking about. Two, four, five. Five simple bolts to remove. Again, if I was working by myself, I could easily remove these, pull off this bedside, slide this back, back into place, and then remove the other side. Or you could keep this how it is 
and install the fiberglass, then pivot it and do the other side. There's more ways to skin a cat, whatever works best for you. All right, you guys, so one thing I forgot about is that all your wire harness, all this stuff right here is all connected and it's attached to the, going to the front of the vehicle. So this is what we're starting to pull on. This is why it's, um, you need to be very cautious of how far you pull your bed back because you don't want to tear any of the, of the wire harness that leads to the rear taillights. So if you don't undo any of that, just be cautious. And you really only need a few inches to get your hand in there and loosen those bolts. So I forgot about it, so you don't forget. To make life easier, I probably could have used a little three inch extension to extend this out if you're using something like this. Otherwise, a good old ratchet works too. Okay, so while my son's still taking off that side, we're gonna go ahead and remove this side. Just be aware, I don't think I'm gonna reuse this, but if you buy the fiberglass with the, you pay the extra 50 bucks, uh, shit, it was $50 at the time, or the fuel door hole, that you're going to need this, and you would simply drill these rivets out, and either you can replace it with hardware, or they do supply a rivet gun that you can use, that you can buy from them, or you could just go to any hardware store if you're only gonna use it for this job. They sell some pretty cheap ones for like 10, 15 bucks. You could just use a hand rivet gun and re-rivet this uh, feed neck plastic into your McNeil Racing uh, fiberglass. But I don't know if I'm gonna reuse it, so I'm just gonna leave it installed for now, and we'll take it one step at a time. So now, let's remove the bedside. So that we're here, now that we're here, these are the brackets that I was talking about that will mount to, I think they will mount to your McNeil Racing. If you go on their website, obviously you should have done your research before you bought them, but I think you can reuse these. I may reuse these for now. You may have to do some bending and tweaking because your fiberglass is gonna be, I think, in a different position as far as the mounting point goes. So, like I said, I'm gonna leave them here for now, and once we fit and mount, We'll see where they where they actually attach, uh, but I'll probably just build my own and replace them and make some other attachment points, make them a little more mine and a little more more better. We'll go from there. So what's happening, you guys? Is if, so McNeil didn't you know notch this out just like the driver's side. So just like Devin said, we want this to sit totally flush. So when you mount this and pull it in, this little angle piece on this mounting bracket is going to push into that. So he's just gonna take the good old Dremel and put a little notch and clean that up and that'll suck it in once we put the hardware in there. So as you can see, Devin's pulling this in and it, and it looks like everything is gonna mount pretty well. We have um, three mounting points right here and it looks like, move your hand for a second. It looks like if we just push this down, we're actually able to get all three mounting points, uh, which is pretty good. And if we go to driver's side, they didn't leave this extra piece of material, they just cut it straight. So we may have to do some slight modification to make this thoroughly fit. And then this side is actually harder to push down. So with these bedsides fully this way, which I feel are much needed because all these mounting points really matter here because of the tail light. So if we come to the front, there's, a, there's zero spacing right here to the back of the bed which looks really good. But if you see the passenger side, there's a lot of space right there. So what I'm gonna do is actually pull a measurement and measure from here to the end and confirm that side. So as you can see, we have pretty close to 77. If you wanna be super technical and I'm going to this radius edge here, we have uh, 76 and seven, uh, seven eighths. And again, and we go to this radius edge 76 and a half ish, 76 and 5 eighths. So we're a quarter to 3 eighths difference on the bedsides, overall length, which for fitment up against the cab, we could run into some problems. So we'll see. So the stock mounting points can be tweaked a little bit and adjusted to actually remount 
here. So we're sure if we undid the hardware and bent this a little bit, it would actually line up just fine. And then same thing with the rear. As you can see here, if you just loosen this hardware, then this can actually be mounted and hold this in place. So I think for now, I'm going to keep these here and we're gonna go ahead and use these mounting points. Cause as you remember, when I build my bumper, I'm gonna have it come over here, which we're gonna be cutting that. So for these mounting points, the bed doesn't come in to the inside to get to this hardware as the stock ones did. So obviously we're gonna have these mounting points up here and these ones here, if we can make them fit and reach, if we can mold and bend this fiberglass, uh, it, should, it should do what we need it to do to have the rigidity. And then I'm putting my rails back on, but even if you don't put your rails back on, remember, you have the mounting points here for your rails, which you are going to want to screw in and hold this down. Uh, I think you could get away with just using stock hardware and a washer. I may suggest if you don't put your rails back on, or maybe even if you do, which I might now that I'm thinking about it, is a rubber washer in between the fiberglass and the rail or the fiberglass and your washer. That way it's just not metal on fiberglass and it gives it just that little bit of cushion so you don't get the spider cracks and fractures. All right guys, so um, we have done a lot of work painted some sides and prepped a lot of a lot of things uh, so now we're towards the fitment side so i kind of wanted just to go over a few things again i don't know exactly how to do it i'm just finding the best way to do it for myself and so i wanted to share that with you again as i said before there's more ways to skin a cat so whatever find whatever you find to be easiest then more power to you so what we're doing now is we're getting this fitment going and so we need the height of it, right? So this needs to be down as far as it can. And then we need to have this back and forth. And right now we're just talking about the top fitment. But before you just go all out and say, oh, I think that's where it's gonna go, you need to double check a few things. And that's what we're gonna go over. So first thing you wanna check is your lights. So you have these little plugs right here that actually used to plug in to stock rubber gaskets, which you don't have that anymore because they're on the stock. So what I'm gonna do before I drill this hole out, and by the way, for my application, there's only one. I'm only gonna be using the bottom. So I gotta go get the rubber grommets and drill the hole to the spec size of the rubber grommet so, this, so that fits on here. But something to be aware of, so I'm lining up the screw holes right now. Yes, this rubber anti-vibration piece, if you will, um, is not, it's not allowing me to go in there. But if you can see, this is a huge, huge gap. You don't want that. The driver's side is good, but the passenger side wants to pull further out. And so if that's the case, then I may be able to line up my screw holes, but it's gonna tweak this light out this, this way. And we don't want that either, because now you're gonna have a more reveal, and this isn't gonna line up. Also one thing that I noticed, and it's a big unfortunate thing, uh, is this, this alignment here. But the passenger side actually has this if you will, this shape, uh, a little more defined as opposed to just being chopped off here. So there's gonna be some little tweaking and able to mount these holes, and I think I brought that up before, but again, your alignment this way really needs to, you need to be aware of what you're doing. So going to the front, since they've been sitting in my garage, unfortunately, they've already kind of taken form. The top, is at its max. Like I can't push this anymore. And yes, I could sand it down, but this top piece right here is already very, very thin. So if I sand it down anymore, this piece that keeps support is liable to break and we don't want that either. So this reveal looks pretty nice, but as the fiberglass comes down, it gets closer to the cab and we don't want that. So I'm gonna to have to push this out. And as you can see, it's flexing the whole piece of fiberglass. So we may need to trim this bottom piece that's actually touching the cab. And then you just wanna make sure your fitment is straight here because it's gonna tweak this whole cab. So long story short, just before you make your holes for your bed rails, if you're gonna use the bed rails, or if you're simply just gonna put hardware in there, you really wanna make sure you, got, you have your bedside exactly where you want it before you just drill those holes because it could really affect end to end or cab or lights 
um, the bottom mounting brackets on either side of the tire, you can finesse those to wherever you want them. So it kind of doesn't matter. Just make sure you have your bedside nice and even. So coming over here to the passenger side, as I was saying, they're not perfect. They're not perfectly mirrored. Uh, and I'm sure it's pretty difficult to do. But again, if you're buying aftermarket, be prepared to make some adjustments because it's gonna need to happen. So this is what I was talking about with the passenger side. It's a lot of movement. So the driver's side is fitting better, but I still need to be aware of where my holes are and where I'm going to align them. If this slides forward all the way, it fits great next to the cab, but then that takes, like I was saying, I mean, this is hanging way off from the truck now. So I, I mean, I automatically know looking at it, that's not where it needs to go. And they do have, you know, some, not, not pre holes, but they do make some markings where the holes should go. But again, they're not exact. Uh, one of the employees from McNeil Racing actually said that their bedsides are more consistent as far as the mounting points go than an actual truck, just because over the years it gets movement. And for some reason, the mounting points aren't exactly the same with each vehicle on each side. I don't know. So pushing this in, this already looks better as far as reveals go for my light. But again, I'm gonna stick my light in here and I'm gonna make sure it's going to sink in where I need it to sink in and not twist or torque. Because remember, there's only two mounting points for the light and you need this little plug to kind of flush it into the bed. If I push it forward, which we know in the back is not gonna work, it has to, it has to, or if I push it back, we know it's not gonna work in the back. If I push it forward towards the front of the truck, I know it's going to work there and now I just have a, a gap back here, but it's gonna have to be okay. So we're dealing with the same problem, which I haven't pulled any measurements yet, but we're wider here than we are down here. But that's just a small adjustment. We're just gonna tweak this out. And we're gonna just use this mounting point down here to push this fiberglass out and make it all, make this whole reveal evenly as much as possible. This is where I was talking about. So you, you have your mounting points, you have a really good idea of where you want this fender to sit, meaning forward and backwards and up and down. Obviously it should be down, that's, that's usually a pretty easy, simple task. Mine is probably actually sitting a little bit higher because as I mentioned before, we added the fiberglass on the bottom side of the top and then added eighth inch aluminum for reinforcement for the bed rack. So how am I gonna get my mounting points? So what I had Devin do is go ahead and draw lines straight down the center of these markings all the way down. So now I have this point and I make sure it's down all the way. So now I'm gonna draw my line here straight across. So now I know where the bottom of the fender sits right here. Now I'm gonna come back up and measure from this line that I just drew with the bottom of the fender to this center point, the cross point of that bolt. Then I'm gonna take that measurement and go from the bottom of this to here. And be careful because your measurements are probably not gonna be the same all the way down. This is obviously, at least in my eye, because I have level eyes, so my wife says, this is shorter than this. This is longer. So you're gonna have, probably have to take a measurement for each, plus the fiberglass isn't perfectly straight, so I wouldn't rely on that. I wouldn't say, oh, this is gonna be a half inch, they're half inch all the way down. I would measure each one and give yourself a number per each one. Then drill a small pilot hole, eighth, could be a little overboard because it's not a very big hole anyways, maybe a quarter inch hole. So then you drill your hole and then I personally am going to double check them. I'm gonna take the time to put the bedside back on, double check and make sure that hole is fairly centered. It doesn't have to be perfect because you, you should be using washers if you're not using the rails, but the rails will cover it. And, but just remember, you don't want slop in these holes because imagine if all those holes were blown out and way bigger, even though they're pressed and sandwiched in between the rail, they're still gonna wanna move and you don't want that. So you want that bolt to be, to have the least amount of room across all of them. So just be aware of what you're doing and be mindful of it, take your time. Okay, so one thing that I wanted to bring up was in and out. You have the edge of this, you have the edge of this coming over this way, okay? Then you have this piece, which actually sits inside of here. This side, again, is made pretty well. Okay, so you gotta imagine when you're gonna screw this down, 
it's going to want to push this in here and pull this away from here. So if it's really bad as the passenger side is, then you may want to stick spacers in here or spacers in here, depending on how bad it is. This side's not too bad, so we should be okay. There's not really a gap under here that I'm too worried about, um, but I may still get some like nylon washers or just another type of spacer. So you'll see on the passenger side, it's pretty bad. So as you can see, I can almost stick my finger in here, especially in the beginning, which I'm not too worried about, but at the same time I am because this bolt is gonna wanna sandwich, it's gonna pull these together. It's gonna actually pull this bed side into here, but hopefully this, the bed body moves before the bed side moves. And so you won't, we, won't, we want this as close as possible too. So it's just something that, to be aware about before you just drill a hole and sink a bolt in there. It's gonna squeeze together. And I'm hoping, like I said, this will pull instead of this pushing and breaking, because it'll break. All right, you guys, so we left off as far as filming goes at uh, the mounting points for the bedsides on the top side. And so as Devin already marked, we marked and measured. So we marked this line for placement centered going left to right. And then we just drew a line, you know, make sure these were down all the way, drew a line here, and then <clears throat> pull the measurement, then remove the bedsides so we could see the mounting hole and then measured the distance from there to the center of the uh, threads. Then put everything back on. I always recommend drilling pilot holes because yes, some of our numbers were off. And so then we just had to adjust a little bit with the hole so we don't get this blown out, wallowed out hole. Um, the rest of that went really smooth. So the bed rails will go on next, but I think I wanna find something in between here and the bed rail because I don't want metal directly on the fiberglass pulling everything in together. I think I want just a kiss of a, bu a buffer of either rubber or like a paper type washer gasket type thing. So I'm mulling that around and figuring that out. All right, and then since we're here, these were the bed stiffeners that I designed. Um, you guys can go ahead and uh, if you guys missed that video, we'll post it in one of these corners. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the link there and down below. Um, as I mentioned in another video, you can purchase them online at a couple different uh, places, off-road places, but me being a fabricator and wanting to produce content and share a little bit of information with you, I just went ahead and built my own. I already have the, have the material on hand anyways. So it's just the three bolts up here, a bolt through here, and then stock hardware um, on the ground floor, and it's just to keep this from swaying. We're, we moved to fiberglass, which is more malleable than the, uh, uh, the sheet steel fiberglass which keeps keeps it a little more rigid um, so these definitely needed to come in handy plus they just look bitching with the extra tie down uh, tie down loops which is awesome so now moving along to this side this is where i found out that i really needed these bed stiffeners and again i won't take too much time on these because we already made a video on this it's a really cool one you should check it out so this side was already out probably from the jumping that i've done or whatever else now can't really see it because it's being hidden by this but it's a true 90 and it just it's it's that much better I'm super stoked about them plus I just really like the way they look it's really awesome so moving along to the other mounting point on the inside of the bed if you will so these are two other mounting points one's going through the bed stiffeners that I made this bracket and then the fiberglass and then this one just goes through this bracket and the fiberglass um, I just used uh, current hardware that I, that I had was uh, 516 stainless steel bolts. Um, I might change all this out later, but it's something I had in stock and I just wanted to bolt it and mount it and go. As far as the lights go, you can see that I don't have any of the stock uh, tailgate mounting hardware in here. 
just because I wanted you guys to see all of this, the really, really important stuff. And I don't want to put my tailgate back on quite yet. There's some other things that I want to do to this truck, but pertaining to this video, this is what's important for you guys for the install. So I went ahead and mounted my lights with the stock hardware. There's no other mounting points for this light other than it's like a little push pin and it goes in a rubber grommet to keep this thing from wobbling. Now these are pretty tight. Now this side is really tight. It doesn't move. Okay, we'll go to that other side and I'll show you in a second. The other thing that I want you guys to see is how tight this reveal is. It's really nice all the way through and it, it fits perfectly and this is flush. It's really, really nice. And I'll show you the difference on the other side. Now coming to the driver's side, here's the reveal line. It's not as smooth in transition and there is a little more of a gap. This light is already pushed all the way up in the holes. And granted, I could bore out the holes and push this up all the way, but this is an off-road vehicle. It's totally fine with me, it works. So now, in comparison to the other side, this is why that little pin that goes into that rubber grommet is super important. That ain't gonna happen off-road. I think over time, that's just gonna wobble itself out. So that that is going to come in full handy, getting, getting that grommet that rubber grommet bushing, I don't know what they're called, and then have that pin just stick in there just like the stock ones. But that stock piece was in the metal fiberglass. So moving straight down, staying on the driver's side, as far as the mounting points go, minus this piece, which I'll talk about in a second, they were pretty similar as far as driver and passenger side goes. So we'll just stay on the driver's side just for information's sake. So I went ahead and mounted right here. Um, these holes were already in this, this subframe piece. And so you can see that to get these holes to line up was just, I would have had to bend and move too much. And I feel I would have put too much pressure on this piece. It just was built incorrectly, unfortunately. Um, so I just decided to mount here and it made it really rigid. Because as I mentioned before, I'm building a bumper and I'm gonna bring it around. I think most of this, I'm gonna cut off anyways. And I'd rather, uh, well, I'd rather bolt up right here. This is a nice tight spot. And, and then my reveal line will just get cut right there, right underneath the bolts. And I'll probably just cut this whole piece off if it's in the way. Okay, so moving on from this mounting point to this mounting point, I want you guys to see that is really sturdy. I like that, that's great. And again, this is gonna get cut. I'm pretty sure I'm sitting at like 90, 95% that I'm gonna cut this and wrap the bumper. So coming down here, to this mounting point. This is the stock mounting point, stock mounting bracket. I never even removed this. I just simply undid the hardware that attached to the stock fender. And then just pulled my measurements, made sure passenger and driver fender are close to the same, and then made sure where I drilled my holes, this bracket is the same. So, by the way, you know, I throw out where I mounted stuff. If you guys have any questions on numbers as far as where I mounted them and what numbers I used, please feel free to comment and get a hold of me or Instagram like that. And I'll tell you my measurements, what I used. Um, again, they may differ because not I feel like not all this fiberglass is precise and exact. And if you leave it in your garage for a while in the heat, it's, you know, it's going to form not on the truck, which is not good. So I feel that these brackets are totally fine for now or if you decided to leave your fender just like this, it's gonna work for you. Now moving right along to the front of the fiberglass, we'll talk about the lack of mounting points up here. That is way too much wobble. What's, what that knocking is, is actually the bottom of the fiberglass hitting the, be, uh, the cab of the truck. And there's only one mounting point right here, and it's a little flimsier than the rear mounting point. All right, so this is the other mounting bracket that's a little flimsier than the rear. So I could use it or I could just rebuild it, but I feel like when I redo this mounting, those side mounting brackets, it's gonna make this all the rigid and I'll just leave this one in. Should be good to go. But I highly recommend putting another mounting bracket on the side of this and maybe reinforcing this. Depends on what you guys are gonna do with your trucks. So coming underneath to the fuel line, this was the crux of the whole, <laughs> of the whole install. Everything else was fairly simple and straightforward. So the fuel line, I'm going to have to warn you guys, if you guys aren't going full 
off-road and changing out the fuel cell and changing everything out and you're going to keep the stock unit you may have a little difficulty so listen up and use what I use or try to make it better so I use this stop to drop down tubes and I use the stock plastic housing that comes with it and as you know I did change the fuel door so I didn't use the stock fuel door nor did I use their mold when I ordered the uh, the fuel door uh, addition to it so I spent a lot of money and time cutting out what I paid for and flattening out and remaking my own fuel uh, fuel door so with the fuel lines the hard lines themselves uh, I did have to straighten one of the breather valves and luckily I had enough room I think using their stock cap or their stock the stock plow plastic funnel if you will so I didn't have to extend the hoses and splice in I had trouble trying to look for these dimen these dimension of hoses I think one is a one inch ID which is usually pretty standard and then an inch and a half ID and so I was going to cut about four inches off each one of these stock hoses and then add in a four inch piece of metal hose clamp hose clamp and then use the piece that I cut off to attach to the this original but I didn't really want to cut anything stock if I could make this work so all I did is do a little bit of bending and I if you guys bend any of these tubes be very very careful because they don't want to bend as easy as well at least I thought they would and then we just extended the hoses and we put hose clamps on them and they leave you plenty of so if this is the end of your metal tube the hose comes all the way down you know three inches almost well you don't need all of that inside of the tube as long as you have enough for the hose clamp and it creates a seal you'll be good to go so that's pretty much exactly what I did and that was mostly my son's idea so that felt good <laughs> So last but not least, let's show off this door that I so hardly worked on. So as you can see, I made my own mold and this is the original cutout that I ordered for 50 bucks. And I've decided again to use this billet aluminum door and then I used the stock plastic piece. Now, I won't go into detail how I attached it, but I'm using some of this hardware. So what I did is I used a heat gun to uh, kind of melt down this, the plastic housing and just free formed it and molded it where it would attach itself. Now it's not fully enclosed, but I'm gonna use some gasket filler and some other products to kind of fully enclose this so no mud and dirt, you know, get shot, flung up by the tires and down in here. But even if it does, the gas cap works totally fine. It seals good. I'm pretty happy with it. And I get my billet door. All right guys, well that's it. I love my bedsides, and if you get bedsides from anybody, but preferably McNeil Racing, because I feel, and maybe I'm being biased because I have them, but I've done lots of research on other fiberglass, and there's a lot out there. But I think McNeil Racing makes a solid set of fiberglass. So I think that's all I got. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, I love the interaction stuff. And if you have any questions, like I said, on dimensions or other tools that I've used or other processes, please go ahead and ask me in the comments below. Yeah, I shouldn't have to tell you. If you guys are YouTubers, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, all that other kind of stuff. Don't have to put the bell on. I don't either. Just watch when you want. We love you. We appreciate you. And see you on the next round.